All right, everybody, welcome to back to the Clack Shack. Uh, it's raining outside today, so I'm kind of stuck inside. Didn't feel like getting muddy up at the mill, so I'm in here working on the laser. I've had a couple of people ask me uh, about the camera setup that I use in Lightburn. I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out there, but uh, not a whole lot of videos explaining everything. Uh, I do use Lightburn, and I use a camera to do most of my projects. And I'm gonna kind of go over how I've got mine set up and, and kind of go through some of the problems that I had early on to try to prevent maybe if you're trying to get a camera going on yours you're on a budget and uh, really want to just be able to pick something up at Walmart and uh, make it work and work well uh, then this video will probably benefit you so if you want to see the process uh, stick around I'm going to reconfigure everything and we'll move on to the next section all right guys uh, this is the setup that I run and the camera that I use is a Logitech Pro Stream HD 1080 HD. Uh, I'll drop the description and the uh, link to it in the comment or in the description down below, so that you can make sure you get the right camera. But the configuration that I'm fixing to go through, uh, I can only say that it works for this camera. Uh, every camera is different depending on the type of lens, the size of the lens, the focal range. I mean, there's a whole slew of problems that you'll run into uh, when you're trying to get your camera set up. But if you use this one that is available at Walmart. Uh, this is the way that I have it set up and these are some of the things that when you're putting it together and getting it installed that you're going to want to pay attention to. Uh, I'm going to go over how I've got the camera mounted and in the next section we'll move over to the computer and I'll, I'll kind of show you how I've got everything uh, set up and configured in there just so you'll have that as well. But the biggest thing that I will say that matters is the camera needs to be in the center of your workspace. Uh, in my situation I have a shelf up here so I just made me a little bracket that serves as a, an extension to get it out to where I need it to be and it goes down here. Now one way that you can, if, you, if you're going to make a bracket like this, so if you'll get up here and get you, like I said, get you, get you something with a string on it that you can use as a weight, kind of like a plumb bob, and get that thing centered directly above your laser, which is in the center of your workspace, that's where you want the camera to be. The second critical thing is that the height above your work area is very critical. Uh, I have moved this thing up and down three or four inches over the period of the past six months and I finally found that right here is where it seems to work best for me. And that's 18 and a half inches above my cutting surface. Now if you put something in here that is taller then that's going to change things. Uh, but but typically when I'm using this, I, I, I'm cutting a quarter inch material or thinner. And so that, that works pretty well. And that's 18 and a half inches above your uh, work bed. But that's the two biggest things that I would, would emphasize that you need to make sure is your elevation above your workspace as well as being centered in your workspace so that, so that everything is uh, more uniform course you want the camera to be level and flat and all that but that's the biggest thing so next we'll move on over to the computer and I'll kind of walk you through what I've got set up over there if you stand by for just a minute and we'll get everything moved over all right everybody I apologize for the uh, the makeshift screen record we got going here I don't have a uh, equipment here at home to, uh, to tie all this stuff together where I can do a a great screen record for you so we're just going to walk through this best way I can uh, the one thing that I will tell you is once you get your camera where you want it you're going to want to go in to uh, use these laser tools calibrate the camera lens uh, that's a little quick thing that you do with a sheet of paper it's got a bunch of dots on it you'll just have to follow instructions and move it around and then calibrate camera alignment now that's one. this one's going to require you to burn a pattern onto a, a work area and then go through and, and, and line everything up by clicking the, the crosshairs or the bullseyes. Those two things will take you probably about 10 minutes. It may take longer the first time or two because if you, until, you get, until you get used to it, you have to kind of read the instructions. Uh, but once you do those two things, you see you should be good. Uh, you get your camera hooked up. I said here, I'm updating my overlay. And the way that I've got my box cut out laid out, let me see if I can open it here and uh there's my box with cut handles if you notice my file when i open it it 
always it always drops to the same location, which is the bottom edge of my workspace. And if you look at if you look here, the uh, it, it it's lining up pretty well. Now this thing, like I said, is not 100% accurate. Uh, you can go over here. You have some uh, adjustments that you can change your X and Y, your X shift and your Y shift. You can change these guys and move it to get it aligned perfectly if that bothers you. Uh, so I had to do a uh, one millimeter shift on my X axis and now it's lined up perfectly. You can't see the, you can't see what is the, what is the cut and what is the uh, burn file. So, but one thing, let me turn this off and I'll show you. If you turn the fade off, you can actually see the material a little better. The, uh, especially if it's a light colored material. So you turn, you click the little fade button up here at the top and it'll actually turn that off and you can see in a little more detail. But as you can see, the, the burn lines all the way across this graphic, all the way across this burn file, the burn lines are lining up perfectly with the piece that I just cut that's laying on my workspace still. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's, it's handy when you're trying to line things up. And if you do a pretest before you're going to burn something with the same thickness of material, you can get it to where you can count on it being uh, exactly accurate. All right, guys, I hope this helped you out. Uh, like I said, I've had a few of my friends that have gotten an X tool ask me about my camera setup and how to configure it. And I've seen a lot of you that seem to be struggling with uh, whether to get a camera, or whether not to get a camera, whether it was worth it or whether it isn't. And I will tell you that if you want to do, uh, let's say you're doing dog tags or something like that, and you're using a uh, template, once you get that template in there, and you can use you can use the uh, the little navigation button. It looks like a, a pin drop on a Google Maps. You can actually use that to confirm whether or not uh, you're still centered, or you can just put a piece of wood on there, burn. Uh, you know, burn an image or, or paper, cardboard, whatever, burn an image, and then once the laser returns to home, then you can go back and uh, reacquire the image and make sure that what you wanted to burn and what burn was actually lined up. And if it was, you know, at that point, as long as the material that you're going to burn to is the same thickness, I mean, I've had really good luck with being able to just use the camera to align everything and make sure it's centered and uh, hadn't had any big mistake so far but like i said you need to do a calibration check before you do just to be sure but i hope the video helped somebody if it did like i said feel free to subscribe and uh, if you got any further questions or anything i can help you with uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll do a video i am not an expert i don't work for x tool i did not have anything to do with creating light burn uh, i do have a background in computers and uh, technology as well as mechanics uh, kind of understand how these things work and I, I literally will sit out here until I figure it out and uh, that's how I've, I've, I've kind of trained myself that and some network research resources through YouTube and Xtools website and stuff like that but I appreciate it and thanks for your time have a good day